A few weeks ago, we looked at lifting the lid and his ridiculous predictions regarding how many flat earthers existed. And this is borne out when we, when we go and do street activism. We have one or two people who come and see us and in the adult population in the UK, we've got something like 35 to 40 million adults. You could say that uh, one, in, one in 10, just 10% of those 30 million would equate to 3 million in the UK. Well, not only is he a flat earther, he is also a space denier. Who'd have thought it? And today, he's going after NASA. Hello all and welcome along to another episode of Tin Four Tuesday with me, Simon Dan. Thank you very much for joining me. Before we get into all that, I want to thank the sponsors of today's video, Raycon. Co-founded by Ray J and endorsed by celebrities like Cardi B, Raycon earbuds start at about half the price of other premium wireless earbuds on the market. And they sound just as amazing as other top audio brands that you know. And their latest model, the Everyday E25, is their best one yet. With six hours of playtime, seamless Bluetooth pairing, more bass and a more compact design that gives you a nice noise isolating fit. Raycon's earbuds are just so comfortable, perfect for on the go listening, taking phone calls and those difficult times where you just want to shut everything out. Just the other day I was relaxing and catching up with my audiobook in peace. Also, unlike some of your other wireless options, Raycon earbuds are really stylish and discreet with no hanging wires or stems. Click the link in the description to get 15% off your next order or visit buyraycon.com slash simandan to get 15% off your wireless Raycon earbuds now. Right, back to lifting the lid and his scathing attack on NASA. Let's see if he's got any credible content that requires further investigation. I know some of you out there would love me to wear a tinfoil hat so you can carry on laughing, mocking and being disappointed in me. Um... No, not at all. Um, I'd like to educate you. But before you do, let me tell you why I came to the decision that we may have been lied to. Because you watched too much rubbish on YouTube and swallowed it? Because you wanted to feel special by thinking you knew something that others didn't? As a way to elevate yourself above others in order to make yourself feel more important? Maybe I just didn't buy this fairy dust sprouting model. No stars backdrop and magic camera panning up by remote control. It was remote control. The lunar surface is too bright for the camera to pick any stars up and the lunar lander used hypergolic fuels which burn with no flame. Maybe I just couldn't believe this build quality of this piece of junk could withstand the minus 10 tall vacuum, let alone make it all the way to the command module. You see, this is why we have problems. You have professed to be an expert on all of these matters several times before. Yet you mention a minus 10 Tor vacuum. Now the Tor doesn't go into negative numbers. Of course, it's 10 to the minus 10, which is a very, 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 very tiny number, not a negative number. 29 seconds in, and you've already been found wanting. Well, there's the space suit. I realized it just couldn't withstand the vacuum and that it would do this. No, it wouldn't. The pressure inside a spacesuit is around 4.3 psi, and that's roughly three times less than atmospheric pressure. I learned the power of a vacuum. That's actually the power of our atmosphere when it's applying pressure to the outside of a container with a vacuum inside it, not the power of the vacuum itself. I learned that landlines couldn't call all the way to space. Why can't they? The call went from Washington to Houston, and then it was relayed to the astronauts from Mission Control. They use radio waves to do this. You can't refute them now, surely, can you? And, this certainly has to be the most and then I caught them dropping things like gravity existed on the ISS. Nothing is dropped here. There is a ring here which is attached to a little locking mechanism. If you carry on and watch this video, you'll see that that ring is still in place and the astronaut doesn't pick anything up. The noises were coming from the bottom of the panel, which is why he looked down. I watched them use VR for fun. 
So. I watched them use VR with glitches. Yes, because if you were trying to fool people, you would definitely publish videos with glitches in, wouldn't you? This is simply something called artifacts due to video compression. Nothing more. I even watched them forget to turn on the VR. Again, why would they publish this otherwise? The resolution of this video is not high enough to see if he's passing anything between his hands. It could be something really small. I caught them coming into shot on harnesses and fading into shot slowly. That wasn't a harness. That was just part of his belt or trousers acting as it should if it was in a weightless environment. Again, why leave that in if you were trying to fool people? I even caught them hiding in the background. Reflection in internal window. I saw them floating in pools. Yes, they test suits and ISS work in a giant pool. It's used because it's similar to space conditions in terms of movement. I saw underwater bubbles floating up from where they were. They don't behave like bubbles because they are ice crystals. Helmets moving when they shouldn't be. That was taken from a Gemini 4 spacewalk, which had, yes, you guessed it, swivelled helmets. Sad and guilty looks when they should have been over the moon. Nice joke, but this press conference was over two months later and they'd been in quarantine for much of that time. I saw shadows coming from three different light sources when the sun should have given us one. They lost the tech and the tapes. I'd go to the moon in a nanosecond. Uh, the problem is we don't have the technology to do that anymore. We, <laughs> Unfortunately, I'm afraid I can't really give you much of a clue as to as to where this data ended up and whether it still exists or not. The budget for NASA has been cut quite dramatically in terms of the overall percentage of the national budget. It takes a lot of money to go to the moon. And they give us CGI images, not real photos. Debunked that before. He even got lazy with copy and paste in the clouds. Some overlays are used for aesthetic reasons, and NASA admit that. We saw launches that never went straight up. And why would that be? Hmm, because the Earth is a globe and that trajectory will get you into orbit? Maybe? Never a continuous video stream, always cut to CGI. So you want two rockets now, do you? One to go up and one to film the other one? <sighs> when I noticed all the landing sites faced us on the one face of the moon, then how was it the Earthrise shot we got with this sideway view is possible? Because it was taken from the command module which was orbiting the moon, not the surface. Then there's the Van Allen belts. The what? Then there's the Van Allen belts. Right. As we get further away from Earth, we'll pass through the Van Allen belts, an area of dangerous radiation. We must solve these challenges before we send people through this region of space. For this flight, it's time to head home. What's your point here? Yes, we sent people through the Van Allen belts. Yes, it was a risk. They still did it. I even laughed at some of the women's ridiculous hairspray instead of zero G. Can you do this when your hair is sprayed? So, how does a court of law decide on witness credibility, I thought? The first test is for plausibility. Think of the landline course, the spacesuits in a vacuum, the ridiculous lamp, the VR, the harnesses, the wires, the bubbles, the hairspray, the CGI. 
Hmm, couldn't really buy it to be honest. Just because you don't buy it, it doesn't mean it's all not true. Besides, I debunked all that. As a comparison, for example, I don't buy it that you've ever held down a full-time job. I mean, you probably have, but I don't buy it. Then there's the demeanor. They look guilty, they look shifty, they even look startled sometimes. Definitely not happy bunnies. I notice you don't play clips of astronauts messing around and joking and playing with stuff. I wonder why. Then we've got the 50 year track record in their past record of deception and obfuscation. Time and time again, it's so easy to find. You mean so easy to believe to make you feel important? Corroboration. Every time you look at a launch or a mission, you find something else which isn't correct. You mean something else you can misunderstand or fabricate? Then finally, you have the motive. The budget, $56 million a day. Control of space. Prop up the heliocentric model. Hide a creator. Take away your personal power. If you don't know where you are, you're confused and disempowered. Take your pick. But I do know where I am and I feel extremely connected to the natural world because of that. Once a witness has been caught lying, they are deemed not credible. And if they lie in court, they are guilty of perjury. We've literally caught every single flat earther lying. And we've never had the press, the US government or the Department of Defence lie at all, have we? Probably have, but that's irrelevant, isn't it? So after watching this, you still want to buy me a tinfoil hat and laugh and mock? Nope, just educate you. Think of the millions of us who have now woken up to the lie. And maybe we just don't believe what we've been told anymore. Well, that's obvious. Doesn't make you right though. I'll leave it to you to make up your own mind. Do your own research. And I'll leave you with some lovely sparkles. Beautiful. Well, I think that is the most comprehensive debunking that I've ever done. And what a lot of fun it was. Really enjoyed it. I hope you enjoyed it too. Thank you very much for watching. Just enough time to once again thank Raycon for sponsoring today's video. Remember, click the link in the description to get 15% off your first order with Raycon. If you liked it today, then please, please do give the video a thumbs up and subscribe as well if the feeling takes you. I have been Simon Dan. Have yourselves a great day and I'll see you all tomorrow for the first episode of the Simon Dan Show. See you all then.